Yep, Holy Spirit, we pray for an outpouring over our kids, Lord. We pray that our kids would be so grounded in the Word of God, so rooted in you, that they could never wonder, Father, that even if they try, their foot gets stuck because they're so rooted in you. And Father, we pray and we bless these kids, Father, that these would be a generation, Lord, that brings heaven to earth, Father. Lord, that walks in revival, that walks in your presence, Father. Lord, that these kids know you and follow you all the days of their life. Come on, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Um, with that, I, uh, I want to pray, or actually I want to speak on um, being full of the Holy Spirit and being full of faith. I want to talk uh, for a minute, and uh, we're even going to give some time at the end, uh, if we can get there, uh, to, to just pray for, for us. Pray for a fresh feeling of feeling of his presence, uh, because God's in the room. And he's moving. And I've, I've just been feeling faith, uh, feeling fire. Um, <clears throat> I looked that word up in the Hebrew. It means fire. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit and fire. And I believe that God uh, wants to just fill us up today. And um, I look in the, the New Testament and the, the guys that the apostles picked to do the work of the ministry, to serve the tables. Stephen and that bunch of guys, if you read about that, I believe it's Acts chapter 6. It says, and they were full of faith, and they were full of the Holy Spirit. And how many of you know that no matter what's happening on the outside, I can be in revival? Right here, This what's ever happening around me, I can be walking in revival, and that is always available because God is pouring out his spirit on all flesh. He's pouring out his spirit right now, and it just takes a little bit of faith just to lean into that and just know that God is with me and that I'm full of faith. I am full of faith. I just encourage you uh, almost to to switch the prayer and, and stop saying, God, fill me with faith, and just say, I'm full of faith. I'm full of faith. I'm full of the Holy Spirit. I'm full. And you just feel a shift when you do that. You feel because you're actually stepping into faith. And you're, you're declaring over myself that I am in revival, that I am living in the presence of God. And that is my reality. It doesn't matter what's going on around me, is that there is a river of living water that is flowing out of me because I'm a believer in Jesus. And that is what the scriptures say. That's what the Bible says. You can take it to the bank because God said it. And when we believe, it says rivers of living water flow out of us. And so I want to just for a minute, we've been talking about uh, being a disciple of Christ and being a follower of him Um, I started this a a few weeks ago, and the first message I talked about was really just defining what does it mean to be a disciple, a follower of Christ. And I stole some language from John Mark Comer that I think is really amazing. If you go back and you study um, the historical rabbi, and, and Jesus was a rabbi, and what it really meant to be a disciple you'll find that it meant, if I'm going to be a follower of Jesus, and I believe this is our highest call, is to follow him, that uh, my life flows out of being uh, yielded and submitted to Jesus, my, being the best husband, being the best father, being the best businessman, being the best pastor. I have found out that Jesus is better at ministry than I am. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He's, the, he's a better father. He, he knows how to lead me in that. And a disciple is someone that is with Jesus. Jesus, um, that is becoming like Jesus and is doing as Jesus did. And that's really what a follower of Jesus is, that I'm with him, I'm walking with him, I'm <clears throat> becoming like him. And really, that's, this, that right there is a big heart for me in this sermon series, is that that spiritual formation, as they say, that you and me would be with him and we would become like him. And then ultimately, we would do as he did, that we would partner with him and bring his kingdom. The, the second message I talked about was abiding in him. It's really the aspect of creating a lifestyle of walking with Jesus. There, there's a scripture in Colossians that I love. It says that we received from Jesus, and just as we received from him, it says to walk in him. 
And there's a, there's a responsibility that we carry to walk in him, that there is a responsibility. There is a setting up my life in such a way that I am walking with Christ, that I'm spending time with him, that I'm having solitude. Our, our church, I really, um, I've been, if I had the book, I'd show you, but I really do. I've, I've really recently, and we've been doing a, um, a class on this, the John Mark Comer stuff, Practicing the Way, can't encourage you to go read that book enough. He's got a book called Practicing the Way, really uh, phenomenal on that aspect of your relationship with God and what does it look like to walk with God. And the truth is, is there, there are some things that, uh, that we need to say no to. There's some things that, that, because the truth is, is that something I'm either conforming to the world or I'm being transformed. I'm either conforming, and, and I'm, I'm conforming to CNN, to Fox News, to, to my, my device every day, like just looking at this thing all the time, every day. It has impact on us. I mean, it just does. And we're just, we're feeding our minds. I mean, I've found my, I mean, like, look, this is something that I still need to grow in. Um, and I, I mean, you can feel the, the, the level of information that we intake is, is I, I don't know that that's really healthy for our brains and psychologically. And so I, there's things that it's important to say no to, and, and that comes out of my yes to him. It comes out of my yes to him and out of my desire to be with him. And the beautiful thing is, and this I, I think this, this stands the test of time, is that there's not a better way that you can live your life than through the teachings of Jesus. Even atheists today will say, I'm a cultural Christian. And what they mean is, is that I agree, like, I think the best way to live my life is, is the way that Jesus taught to live your life. You might as well just believe in him. <laughs> I mean, it's just true. And, and I've said this many times, you, you put two societies next to each other, you know, Jesus's teachings and live a, lo- a society that's his, and you throw it against any other society, I guarantee you, you know which society you're going to want to live in. It's because his teachings are truth. Their reality. They line up with um, the way that we're made because he created us. So he knows the best way for us to live. He knows the best way for us to think. He knows that living in forgiveness, living in love, living in honoring each other, living in community, living in long-term relationships. He just knows that all that stuff is going to form you into the best version of yourself because he designed us. And so being with him is so important. The, the last thing we hit was a lifestyle of encounter. Um, I really um, believe that um, I, I don't, I don't want to just read the book and know about God. I want to know God. I want to, and I've felt this even in our staff. I've loved this. We've had good discussion around this recently, but it's, I want to know him and I want him to know me. And there is a, there's something powerful about, it. there's some scriptures in there. You can find them where it's like, I didn't know you. And he's like, you might have casted out, you know, demons, healed the sick, did prophesy all this stuff in my name, but I never knew you. And there's something about God knowing us. Am I letting him in? Um, I was, we were in a meeting the other day and this thought ran through my head and I felt like it was the Holy Spirit. If there's anything that, if there's a thought that is running through my head and I keep rehearsing it, then I haven't brought that to God. If I'm just mulling over something, and, and I'm, a, I'm a master of doing that. It's called worry. And, and you just mulling over stuff. And it's, if I haven't brought that to God, it's, it's a good indicator that I haven't brought that thought or that thing to the Lord because I am just bringing it to myself over and over and over and over and, and over. And I'm just, it's like, it's like you're just punching yourself. And it's just like emotionally, it's like, uh, uh. And it's like, if, you, if I can bring that to God and say, God, this is my thoughts. Like search my heart, know my ways, know what I'm thinking. And he speaks to that, guess what? It brings peace. If I can yield that to God, it's a, there's an impact there. But today, I want to talk for a minute about the Holy Spirit. Jesus told his disciples, he said, teach them, go make disciples of all nations and teach them what I have commanded you. Go read John. John's all about, the, it's, so much of it is about the Holy Spirit. John is, God is, and Jesus is in, in John, and it's, it's in the other gospels as well. But he's teaching about the Holy Spirit and the relationship that we should have with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that I'm going to go away. And that would have been really confusing for the disciples. But he said, I'm going so the Holy Spirit can come. 
so that he can come and he's going to lead you into all truth. And I want to uh, read this verse that's really, <clears throat> really speaks to this. But uh, in John 16, 12 through 15, I actually read this a couple weeks ago. It says, I have much to say to you, more than you can bear. But when he, I love this, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and he will make it known to you. One of as I was praying about today, I felt like I felt in my heart that God wanted me just to talk about the Holy Spirit, to share about who he is. And one thing that's neat in this, it says, but when he, it didn't say when it, he says, but when he, talking about the spirit of truth, comes, he is a person. The Holy Spirit's a person. It's not just some, uh, he's described as wind, he's described as a river, um, he, he can be described in these ways, but the Holy Spirit is a person, and Holy Spirit is God. He's part of the Trinity. It's Father, Son, and Holy Bible. <laughs> We love to say that. It's Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he is a part of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we see this when we think about the Holy Spirit. If you've heard of the law of first mention, law of first mention um, in the theological world is when, when I'm thinking about a doctrine or a truth about something in the Scripture, it points to going to when was the first time that this truth was in the scripture. And that really lays a foundation and it's kind of how that truth is employed and how that truth at its very firm foundation, it, it, it kind of takes us to the place of what is this truth and what is the, the um, foundation of this truth. And if you go all the way back to Genesis 1, um, <clears throat> in the very beginning, it, was, it says the earth was formless it was empty and dark covered the deep, which really sounds like us before Christ. When you think about it, you see the whole salvation picture here. It says it was formless. It was empty. I think about formless. It didn't have an identity. It was empty. I mean, you think about even in your own life, when I feel disconnected from God, I feel empty. And it says darkness, evil in a sense. Darkness covered the deep. And what happens, and it says the Father, the Son, and the Spirit were there. And it says, if you go read this, it says, and the Holy Spirit was hovering. The Spirit was hovering. Some translation says the Spirit was moving. And then God said, let there be light. Um, the Holy Spirit, I think this speaks to the nature of the Holy Spirit in one, that the Holy Spirit is moving. The Holy Spirit is hovering. He is, he is moving. And I also think that the Holy Spirit, when you look at the whole, the whole creation, what did God do? He took something that was formless, that was empty, and it was dark. It didn't have an identity. It didn't have a purpose. And what did God do? If you look up the word, let there be light. Uh, light in Hebrew actually means to bring order to chaos. What God did is he took something that was in chaos and he brought order to it. He spoke and the Holy Spirit moved. And it's this whole redemptive plan of God. And this is what Holy Spirit does, is he changes us. He transforms us. And we, if you go throughout the Bible, you'll see this in the, in the New Testament. It says that Peter spoke. He preached the word. And it, what, it, what does it say? And the Holy Spirit fell. And the Holy Spirit moved. Um, this, to me, it's the picture of like when I read the Bible, when I'm reading the word, um, that word spirit, it does mean, one of the definitions is breath. It's the breath of God. It's the life of God. And so when we're reading through the scriptures, and I know you probably can attest to this, what happens? All of a sudden, you feel God breathing on what you're reading. You'll just be reading through something, and, and a, a, a scripture will just jump off the page. A lot of times, to me, it'll be a word or a phrase, and you feel the breath of God. You feel the Holy Spirit moving in my heart on that scripture. And this is what the Holy Spirit's doing. He is moving. He's actively moving right now. Even as I'm speaking, I believe it. I believe that he's speaking to you. I believe he's ministering to you. I think that um, I, I just love the whole idea of how I can be saying something and God's speaking something even maybe directly related to it or not, but something will just 
just drop in your heart where you feel and you sense God, just like I did as a kid. I, that's why I love being in environments where God's moving because the, the minister or whatever's happening will be speaking, preaching, and then all of a sudden you'll just feel something shift in your heart. You'll feel the, the weight and the breath of God breathing on something. I remember one time, Bill Johnson, I went the first time I ever heard him speak live. He just said, God is good. And he just paused like he does. Probably didn't say something for like another minute. But I remember like right when he said that, I felt this missile of goodness just like explode inside of my heart. Like I felt the, the breath of God on what was said. And I remember in that season, it began to shift the way that I see God. It shifted me from this kind of dictator feeling of a God to the God is this good father that loves me and that God is good and God's in a good mood and he wants to move on the earth. Um, <clears throat> and so the Holy Spirit, he's, he's moving. And <clears throat> I, um, there's a verse here. I'm going to read. Describes who he is. John 14, 26. It spe- says, but the comforter, I like this translation, which is the Holy Ghost. (laughs) But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you. Different translations say, it says, but the Comforter. Some translations say Comforter. Some say Helper. Some say Counselor. Some say Advocate. Um, Before I... I jump into that. Um, Jesus, he, and the uh, best way I know how to say this is Jesus stood up for the Holy Spirit. He, he protected the Holy Spirit. There's a, there's a moment that moves my, my heart because there's this moment where this man, this demon-possessed person comes to Jesus. He can't see. I think he can't see and he can't hear. And Jesus heals him, drives the demon out, heals him. And the people begin to say, this is the son of David. Is this the son of David, the Messiah, the one that we've been waiting on? And the Pharisees come along and they're getting scared because they're, you know, <laughs> their ministry's under attack here because here's this Jesus guy and, and they're having to protect something. And there's a lot of reason to that. And, and actually, the more I've studied that, probably the more I understand the Pharisees and could understand why they felt the way they did. But they were, they were scared. And, and they start to, in a sense, sort of attack Jesus. And, and, <clears throat> and they say that he's driving out this demon by other demons, really by Satan. And they say, this, Jesus is doing this. And it's the whole verse where Jesus is like, you know, how can I, you know, drive out a demon, you know, if, if I'm a demon, you know, if, I'm, if that's what I'm partnering with, how can a house stand if it's divided against itself? And, you know, kind of brings that whole revelation. And eventually where I'm going with this, is I want to <clears throat> I want to read this because it gets to this point where Jesus says, um, therefore, and this is Matthew twelve thirty one. He says, therefore, I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. This is the context of that story. So Jesus is sharing this in response, in a sense, to these guys. He says he knows their thoughts, and he's in response to them accusing him of driving out this demon by another demon, this is Jesus' response to that. And he says again, he says, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. So if you say something against me, you'll be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree bad and its fruit bad for a tree is known by its fruit. Fascinating to me that Jesus makes a, he, you know, they'll say, people say uh, clarity is kindness, being clear is kind. He's pretty clear right here. He's like, you can, in a sense, he's almost saying you can mess with me, but you can't mess with the Holy Spirit. You, you, can, you can blasphemy against me and you'll be forgiven. You do this against the Holy Spirit. And I think Jesus, I think there's times where Jesus will make strong statements because he's really making a point here. And really what he's saying is, is that the Holy Spirit just moved and set somebody free. And I don't want you to mess with what the Spirit of God's doing. I don't want you to blasphemy against that. If you look up some of the words of what this means, it means to slander, detraction, which means to take away 
speech in a <clears throat> that's in an injurious way to another good name. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know about you, but for me, I'm like, man, that's a that's a strong statement by Jesus. That's pretty strong that he's like, hey guys, again, you you can mess with me, but I, I don't want you to mess with what the Spirit of God's doing. And this is what God is actually doing. And he's moving on the earth. And he's moving. And <clears throat> I'm, in a sense, God is, is standing and protecting what God is doing, protecting what the Holy Spirit is doing. Um, <clears throat> I love the, this, these verses of who it says the Holy Spirit is. <clears throat> he says that he's the, what, the comforter. He's the helper. You know, he's your biggest advocate. He's, he's, he's your wisest counselor. You know, he's your greatest source of comfort and pain. When you need help, he's right by your side. When you need assistance, he, he has all the knowledge in the world and knows how best to move forward. When you get off the path, he's there to convict us, to help us back on the path of righteousness. <clears throat> I, f- I feel this for some today. Holy Spirit is your comforter. He's here to comfort you. He's here to counsel you. He's here to help you. And, and I, I feel that even um, in the midst of your greatest pain, the greatest comforter that we have is the Holy Spirit. We need each other. We need the body. We need encouragement from each other. Um, but I, I think about there some seasons in my life where I was in some, some hard times. And I, I remember one time where I was just in a, in a tough spot my wife and I were walking through something with one of our children, and it was just a hard spot to be in. And I remember that breath of God that came over me. And God spoke to me, and it completely changed my countenance. I remember going from being afraid and scared and done, and I was just at kind of the, our its, um, wit's end. And all of a sudden, I felt that breath of God come over me, and it was the comfort and peace of the Holy Spirit and it totally changed everything. And I just, I feel that for some of you this morning, that God wants to comfort you, that he wants to counsel you, and that he wants to take, as the scripture says, what is his, and he wants to declare it to you. He wants to speak it to you. Like how do, what's that distance? You know, the way that Jesus talks about, what's the difference between his kingdom and us? Really, it's the Holy Spirit. It's, it's relationship with him where he takes what is his. He takes peace and he takes love. He takes healing. He takes counsel and wisdom and he declares that to us. And what does it do? It nourishes our souls. It renews our spirit. It sets us free. It heals our body. It empowers us and it restores our soul. And I just feel that over you this morning that God is restoring your soul that God wants to comfort you in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your darkest moment, in the midst of where I want to give up, I want to quit, I want to stop. You know, there's a, there's a moment um, where John the Baptist is the guy that's walking with God, and God says so much about I me. Mean, Jesus said so much about John the Baptist. He was like, there's, you know, he's the greatest uh, prophet of, of all. And, you know, and he's like, and, and <clears throat> so he's like giving him this high praise. And there's a moment where, um, and I feel like this is what God wants to do to some of us in the room is that and and there's a moment where John the Baptist is is full of God and he's full of the presence of the Lord and all he sees Jesus and he makes this powerful declaration because this is what happens when you're full of the spirit when you're full of faith you're able to recognize what God is doing and so Jesus comes up and John the Baptist says behold the lamb of God the one that takes away the sins of the world makes a powerful statement and he's able to see what the spirit of the Lord is doing there's another moment in John the Baptist's life where he's in jail and he's discouraged and he's in a hard spot. You can only imagine being in a jail cell, especially back then. I can only imagine what he's walking through. And he is now in this state, he's questioning and he sends his disciples to Jesus. And he says, he says to ask him, are you the one? Remember, this is John the Baptist that made the powerful declaration, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And now he's in a discouraged, disappointed spot, and he's sending his disciples to Jesus to ask him, are you the one? Are you the Messiah? And what's fascinating, if you go read it, what Jesus did is he pointed them. He said, go tell John that the deaf are hearing 
that the blind are seeing, that the dead are being raised, that the gospel, the good news is being preached to the poor. Go tell them. You know what's fascinating about that is that what did God, what did Jesus do? He, he didn't tell John that he was going to get him out of the jail cell, which is kind of discouraging. <laughs> you know, he didn't tell him, but what he did is he redirected him to what God is doing. He redirected him, and that's an encouragement for any of us in the room that sometimes when I'm in despair, I'm discouraged. At some point, I've got to get my eyes back on what Jesus is doing. At some point, I've got to be able to shift myself just as Jesus was trying to shift John the Baptist to say, this is what I'm doing. I'm healing the sick. I'm raising the dead. I'm casting out demons, and I want to get you focused back on what I'm doing on the earth. And that, that's what I feel like when I'm in the Spirit, when I'm full of faith, I'm walking, I'm able to see as John was able to see that God is moving and this is the Son of God. And so my encouragement is to focus to our attention on what God's doing, to be fill, filled with the Holy Spirit in our lives. And <clears throat> there's, there's this two-sided coin, and I just want to pray for us in just a second. Cole, you can come on up. Um, there's, there's this two-sided coin to the Holy Spirit. There's this side of him that is this comforter, that is this counselor, that is this, this um, encourager. And then the other side of the coin is, is that he is the empower, that he gives us power. You know, it says in Acts 2, it talks about how the Holy Spirit, when he comes, what are you going to receive? Power. You're going to receive the power of God. I, I love if in our, if you go look up kind of what that word means, power, I think it's in the Greek, it means dynamic. It means dynamite. And that's what the Holy Spirit does to you and, to you and me. He makes, us, he makes us dynamic. He makes us where it's not, just, it's not just Jonathan, but it's Jonathan with Holy Spirit all over him. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not just me, but it's, it's the Holy Spirit moving in my life. Um, <clears throat> if you can, can you stand with me? I, um, <clears throat> I love what um, John the Baptist said. He says, I baptize you with water. But Jesus is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. <laughs> I said that earlier, but I looked that up. That word means fire. He's going to, he wants to baptize you with fire. And I just, I love that description. Like, it's, it's not just, a, you know, not baptizing us with ice, <laughs> something that's cold. But he's baptizing us with something that is, it's contagious. It's something that you can't put out. It's something that lights us on fire. And I, I just feel over us today, one, I do think the Holy Spirit wants to comfort us. And I think there is just a comforting over us. And I, I do, I want to, we've got about five or 10 minutes and I, I want to just, I do want to open up the front. And if you want to come up here and respond, and our, I've got a couple of our team here that is, would want to pray for you. But if you do want just a fresh impartation of the Holy Spirit in your life, we would love to pray for you. There's a, in Shasta, um, <clears throat> up in Northern California, there's a lake, it's called Shasta Lake. And there's three rivers that flow into the river or into the lake. And I believe it's a beautiful picture of what our lives with Jesus should look like is that we, we need more inflow. We, need, we don't want to just be a lake, but we're called to be a river. And I do believe in the kingdom that we really only keep what we're willing to give away. And it's meant, the Holy Spirit is meant to flow through us. And so <clears throat> I, just, I just want to create a little space. We've got about five minutes. And if you want to come up, I want our team to pray for you. And I just want to pray for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. It's something that we continually need in our lives. And there's something powerful about laying on hands and just praying. But I just want to create a little altar here for anybody that wants to come up. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. 
I kept feeling this earlier, but I feel like there's a, there's a, there's a grace for faith. There's just a grace for, for faith in the room that nothing is impossible with God. Lord, I pray for an impartation right now over Oak City, over our family. God, that nothing is impossible with you, Father. Nothing is impossible. Lord, you defied physics. You defied it all. Lord, you defied it, Father. You walked on water. You turned water to wine, Father. Lord, you lived in another realm, Father. You lived in a realm of faith where nothing is impossible, Father. And Lord, I pray for an impartation, God, of that in our minds, in our spirit, Father. Lord, that we would, we would live in your way. We would think the way you think. Lord, who knows the thoughts of God except for the Spirit of God, Father? And it's the Spirit of God that lives inside of us, Father. Lord, that we have the mind of Christ, that we can think like you think. And Lord, I pray for just every person in the room, just a fresh feeling of your presence. I just encourage you with me, just as best you know how, just to turn your faith towards receiving from the Lord. Whatever that looks like, Lord, we, we, we open our lives and our hearts to you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, we pray for more, more of your spirit in our lives. Lord, we, we declare over us, Lord, just like Stephen was, that we are full of faith. We're full of faith. We're full of the Holy Spirit. We're full of your grace, God. Ooh, thank you, Father. I just felt like somebody with any any stomach issues, just feel like healing in the stomach, that if you've got any issues in your stomach. Also heard before church about nerves, anything, any nerve condition. Wow, we just release healing right now over people's nerves, Father, in Jesus' name. Also just keep feeling like root causes. Like I feel like there's even uh, sozo happening in hearts right now, Lord, that things that root issues that we have been carrying, cycles we've been walking in because of pain that happened in our lives, because of trauma from way back when. I just see God cutting that string, Lord, in our lives, Father. Lord, I thank you that you can rewire the way that we think, Father. And Lord, I pray for that right now in Jesus' name. Also felt shoulder. If there's any shoulder issues in the room, Lord, we release shoulders. Thank you, Father. Just feel this word for somebody. God cares about your finances. God cares about your finances. God sees you in that spot. He sees you in the place. Lord of financial, I just feel like he sees you. I feel like there's there's financial distress. Like God, I just feel like God, he sees that. And also feel like God's inspiring people to give. Lord, I just feel that. Like Lord, uh, just to be generous people. That maybe even I had an idea to give to something or to give to somebody or to give to a ministry. I just feel like God breathing on your generosity. 